It's time for our storyline with Gunhawk and Gun Bunny, which was interrupted by the death of Abattoir in its original publication order, covering Detective Comics issues number 674 and 675. These issues were written by Chuck Dixon, with pencils by Graham Nolan, inks by Scott Hanna, colors by Adrian Roy, lettering by John Costanza, and were edited by Darren Vincenzo and Scott Peterson. We have a brief opening with Asbat wrecking some people during a subway firefight with an increasingly fascist internal monologue. It comes across like the system is overwhelming Jean-Paul's own psyche. We then shift to our villains, a sniper team, Gunhawk and Gun Bunny, who are a husband and wife team, who we see pop their target at a rooftop party from another skyscraper blocks away. Really well done art here. We see Gunhawk line up his shot on the target and fire, with three panels showing the project trajectory of the bullet before it hits its mark. I do kind of wonder if this is before that one corn video came out. In any case, due to the difficulty of the shot, Major Crimes gets brought on and Bullock brings on Asbat. Interesting, but not surprising, considering where we're going to go with Abattoir's death and the non too distant future, that it's Bullock and not Gordon. At Hawk and Bunny's hunting lodge, Hawk learns about a super high-tech gun that's going to be on display at a gun show in Gotham. He wants it, and he wants it with a five-finger discount. But to get it, they're going to have to go back into Gotham. Meanwhile, Asbat questions the guy who threw the party and learns that he was a business partner turned Black Veil victim of the dead guy, who he arranged the assassination of. Asbat learns the sniper's code names and learn, uses that to learn that they've returned to Gotham. As part of this whole in thing, by the way, Asbat uses the light in his costume to intimidate the guy. Uh, with the sort of Asbat signal basically being projected from the chest piece. Um, considering that part of the idea of the costume in all of its forms is the use of theatricality against the people that Batman is up against, honestly, the light on the costume is a nice touch. Spider-Man did a similar thing as well um, at various points, like during the, not so much during the Ditko era, but during the uh, Ramita, um, John Ramita era. And it worked well then, and it works really well now with Batman. We then cut to the gun show, where Gunhawk and Gun Bunny try to steal the gun, only for literally everyone at the expo to draw on them. And then, just to put the icing on the cake, Asbat shows up. I love this gun. Maybe it wasn't such a good idea holding up a gun show in broad daylight. You don't say, Gun Bunny. In the course of this massive firefight, Gun Bunny gets tagged with a gunshot, and the two make a retreat as the issue ends. The next issue opens with Azrael testing, I guess I'm calling him Azrael now, not Asbat, because this, this, is, this is the system in control, uh, testing his wrist-mounted, fully automatic shuriken cannon in the Batcave. It is very clear that Jean-Paul isn't home right now. The system has taken up full control of of Jean-Paul's body. Meanwhile, at Mercy General Hospital, Gunhawk storms in with a gun bunny and demands immediate treatment for his girl. And if he doesn't get it, he'll start shooting people until she does get it. GCPD tries to form the perimeter on the hospital and Lieutenant Kitch tries to negotiate, but without success. Azrael infiltrates through the roof and draws off Gunhawk. Well, as you expect for the conclusion of the story, they has fight during which time Gunhawk burns through all his ammo. Azrael nearly kills him, but is stopped by GCPD storming into the evacuated wing they are fighting in and just opening fire on the both of them. Ultimately, Azrael overpowers Gunhawk and leaves him injured and uncon or barely conscious in a stairwell. When he comes to, Bullock, Kitsch, and Montoya read him his rights, and Montoya tells him that Gun Bunny's condition is stable as the story ends. So this storyline was all right. I think it would work to have worked better if there hadn't have been passage of time implied by the death of Abattoir in between the two parts of the story. That is very much a publication order situation. Now, I don't know how well they could have coordinated this at the time we're talking about early 90s-ish. So... I don't know how much access to email they necessarily would have had to say, hey, 
this important issue with the death of abattoir that really heavily moves this plot forward is going to be coming out in between the two halves of the story that sort of thing you do use that to keep everyone coordinated and on track um i we get some acknowledgement of it but we also get the panel of a uh, tactical team sniper referring to batman as the automator auto, as an honorary member of the tactical team and also a scene later where the tactical team moves in opening fire and on both batman and gunhawk though in the latter case it's the gotham city tactical team and all gotham and as we've established all gotham city cops with perhaps the sole exception of as exceptions of lieutenant catch detective montoya and commissioner gordon are bastards we have like three good apples in a rotten barrel a fully rotten barrel as far as gunhawk and gun bunny go are two new villains that are introduced in the story they are interesting characters um considering how much dc comics and superhero comics in general will err on the side of not putting characters in happy relationships because they think that will provide more drama um that people in a in a unhappy relationship or on again off again relationship are more interesting than people who are in a steady one a opinion i think is misguided um having villains who are in this position like gun hawk and gun bunny is actually a nice refreshing change and it feels like given the circumstances editorial is less likely to force a breakup of these characters while they're in this situation and chuck dixon did bring them back a few more times um particularly in a birds of prey storyline before they got killed off by gail simone in secret six however that said that was also pre-new 52 they got brought back afterwards but not after flashpoint so they weren't killed after new 52 so presumably they're still alive and kicking for a writer to do something interesting with them. And I do hope we'd see them again. I like having romantically entangled supervillain teams. And if you're not going to let the heroes have a happy romantic life, let the villains do. Whether it's or villains slash antiheroes, whether it's Harley and Ivy or in this case, Gunhawk and Gun Bunny, even if they're a couple kind of psychotic assassins there have a potentially like just by nature of having a happy romantic relationship that gives them a, a interesting dynamic that you don't see often and that's that's great next time night's quest continue concludes basically with shadow of the bat 28 and robin number seven Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe, and also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.